So finish going over worksheet one. So the first thing is, what is the significance of the slope of your velocity versus time graph? Explain. So what did you guys come up with? What was the slope of your velocity versus time graph? What did that mean? What does that give you? Good, the acceleration. So the slope of your velocity versus time graph is your acceleration. Perfect. All right, so compare the slope of your velocity versus time graph to the slope of your position versus time squared graph. What does this say about the significance of the slope of your position versus time squared graph? All right, so let's start with the velocity versus time graph. Can somebody tell me what was the slope for that? 5 over 0.5, and what is 5 divided by 0.5? 10. So that's 10, and then this was in meter, centimeters per second, and this is in seconds, so our units then would be centimeters per second squared. And what about the slope for my position versus time squared graph? Five over one, cool, so that's just five. Then this question asked us to compare the two. So if I'm comparing 10 centimeters to second, per second squared to five centimeters per second squared, how do they compare? How do those compare to one another? One's bigger, huh? and the other one's smaller, right? How many times smaller is the one on the right? Is it five times smaller or two times smaller? Two times smaller, it's half as big, yes? Okay. So if it's half as big, that means that this is half of that. So the slope of the position versus time squared graph is, all right, and let's remember what that was. What did we just say the slope of our velocity versus time is equal to? Yes, acceleration. So that means that the slope of my position versus time graph if it's half of the other one, then that means it's half of the acceleration. So we're taking the answers that you guys got and we're taking them one step farther. So don't erase what you have. I want you to add to your answer. Does that make sense? So you guys probably got that one of them was twice as big as the other or one of them was half as big as the other. What you're doing now is you're adding, ah, oh, we're going to take these two things, we're going to combine what we got, and now we realize that the slope of the position versus time graph is half of the acceleration. Cool. Number 17, we're going to write an equation that relates velocity and time for the wheel using a mathematical analysis of our velocity versus time graph. Again, I had you guys do it one way. We're going to take it one step farther. We're going to take your equation and we're going to write a general equation. So for the velocity versus time graph, velocity was measured in centimeters per second. Time was measured in seconds. And what I asked you to do is to start with y equals mx plus b and substitute in for the things from this graph. I'm going to go around the room. First table over here, instead of y, what should I put for my y variable? Velocity, perfect. And I'm going to just write it as v. Back table over there, can you guys tell me what is the slope of my velocity versus time graph? Okay, cool. And we decide that 5 over 0.5 was equal to 10. So I'm just going to do 10 centimeters per second squared. 
And what does that slope on a velocity versus time graph represent? Slope on a velocity versus time graph is the? Yes, acceleration. So this slope is my acceleration. Cool. So that is my acceleration. And then we go times x or the variable that's on the x-axis, this front table up here. Can you guys tell me? What is my horizontal variable? Seconds are the units. Time, good. And remember I make my T weird like this because it always ends up next to a plus sign. So you want to make sure that you can tell the difference between your T and your plus. Then we're going to need to know what our y-intercept was. On your graph, I believe your y-intercept was 0, yes? OK. Well, let's just say our y-intercept did not happen to be 0 this time. What do you think that would represent? Turn to your table groups. What is your y-intercept going to represent when you have one? Ready, go. I heard the starting. The starting what? This is a what kind of graph? Yes, this is a velocity versus time graph. So the y-intercept is going to be the starting velocity. Good, yes. And the way we write that is v with a little zero after it. That means v naught, which means the starting velocity. This would be if you were already moving when you started graphing it. All right, so there's a couple of you. I don't think I saw you write the general equation. This is the general equation for, well, one of the two general equations for this unit. I'm still waiting for one of you to write it down. Thank you for all of those of you that already wrote it down. You guys already wrote this one. This is the one that you have. Now we've created the general equation that works for everything, not just your particular graph. All right, let's do this again for number 18. In number 18, we have a position versus time squared graph. Um, notice on my graph, I'm graphing time squared here. This is time squared. And if I square my times, that means that my units are also going to get squared. So go ahead and check your graph. Did you do time squared and did you do seconds squared? Really easy mistake to make. All right. Woo. All right, here we go. So now we're going to start with y equals mx plus b again. But now, instead of doing y, we are going to do our y variable. This group up here, can you tell me, what is my y variable? Good, the position. And the letter for position is x. Um, this group here, what was your slope? Good, so 180 over 36 or 5. Well, and different people chose different numbers, so I like to put the simplified one up there because then it encompasses everybody's answers. All right, perfect. Now, a minute ago, we said what that slope meant up here when we did number 16. What is the slope of our position versus time squared graph? The slope of the position versus time squared graph is? One half of my acceleration. All right, cool. That means that when I put my thing down here, that means that this is going to be one half of the acceleration for my slope. Then my horizontal variable, group over here in the corner. Can you tell me what is my horizontal variable? Time squared, yes, winning. 
All right, plus my y-intercept, which in your case was zero meters. Nope. Directly Yep. But what we're going to do now is we are going to add to it. We're going to give you the general equation. What was zero meters? What would that represent? If it wasn't zero, what would that be? Starting what? Starting position. Yes. Yeah, you're on the right track. All right. Now. The one thing that we cannot get from your graph at this moment, because you guys, like, it's just too hard to get it, is that in addition to this, the general equation for this unit, then you're also going to go plus V naught times T. I'm not going to explain why right now. You just want to write this in so that, that way you have the whole equation. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So this is your whole equation here. And the area underneath the velocity versus time graph tells you displacement. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Tuesday.